Game Ranks presents 10 GameCube facts you probably didn't know. Nintendo's GameCube launched in the fall of 2001, and we've been changed ever since because that console was freaking awesome. So let's get started off with number 10. The GameCube, like all of Nintendo's other hardware systems, had a bunch of little quirks in the software. Take for example the GameCube menu background. If you hear it sped up to 16 times, you will hear the same tune of the Famicom Disk System startup. For those of you neophytes out there, the Famicom, or the Family Computer Disk System, was Nintendo's first video game peripheral add-on to the Nintendo Family Computer console in Japan. At number 9, when Nintendo president at the time, Hiroshi Yamachi, released the GameCube, he believed that people, and I quote, do not play with the game machine itself. They play with the software, and they are forced to purchase a game machine in order to use that software. Shortly after this statement, Nintendo priced the GameCube significantly cheaper than the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. That was Nintendo's mindset at the time behind the pricing. The idea was that the hardware existed solely to people to get to the more important thing, the software, the games you play. So they didn't want an expensive hardware console to keep people from getting to that software. And that was a pretty good idea, and it definitely worked because myself and everyone else I knew had a GameCube at the time. At number 8, the Nintendo GameCube was actually capable of 3D display, and there was a 3D version of Luigi's Mansion that was developed, but it required the use of a special LCD screen. In a Nintendo official interview on the site regarding Nintendo's approach to 3D during the launch of the 3DS, Satoru Iwata said that they were thinking about 3D for a long time, even back when they were developing the original GameCube. They didn't go with 3D because Iwata said that the liquid crystal for it was still really expensive. The Nintendo GameCube could actually display 3D images if you attached a special LCD, but that LCD was so expensive and unobtainable at the time that Nintendo decided to scrap that feature. It's cool to see that Nintendo had been working on 3D for so long, and it seems like they really got it right and innovated with the new 3DS. It only took them over 10 years to get it right. At number 7, there's actually a secret episode of the Pokemon show that was only released through the game Pokemon Channel on the GameCube. This episode was dubbed Pichu Party and was exclusive to Pokemon Channel which was released in 2003. This episode was actually split into five parts over the Pokemon Channel where Professor Oak would show the first part of every episode as soon as he introduced himself, and then further parts of the episode were unlocked each day. After the sixth day, you could view the full episode to your liking. At number 6, to accommodate right-handed players controlling the normally left-handed Link in Twilight Princess, and since Nintendo really didn't have any time to go back and reanimate Link, developers actually just mirror flip the entire game. The GameCube game and the Wii game are mirror opposites of each other. This is because the GameCube version is the original and the Wii version is a port. This might freak out players who jump from playing it on GameCube to playing it on Wii because some things seem pretty different. At number 5, here's a weird fact, there's a Windows executable of Pikmin on the GameCube disc that is playable on PC. Yes, the Pikmin GameCube disc actually shipped with a playable Windows file of the game. There's actually a whole wiki page on how to get it up and running and how to use debug features that the developers originally scrapped. So if for some reason you have the urge to play Pikmin again, but on a PC, you can. It just takes a little bit of technical know-how. And at number 4, the Nintendo GameCube actually had a hybrid version with a commercial DVD player called Q. This was developed in tandem by Panasonic. This hybrid commercial GameCube was part of a deal struck with Nintendo to develop the optical drive for the original GameCube hardware. This GameCube had a completely different case thanks to a full-size DVD drive in the GameCube, as well as a few other small hardware revisions. This GameCube version called Q was released exclusively to Japan in December 2001, but despite the advantages, not a lot of people bought it, and it was discontinued in December 2003. At number 3, here's a fact that many of you guys probably knew. If you turn on the GameCube while holding down the Z button on the controller, you'll hear a different startup noise including some weird music and a baby laughing, rather than that standard intro music. I know, because that baby's laugh used to give me nightmares. <laughs> Now what myself and my other friends didn't know until the internet existed is that try replicating that with four controllers plugged in at the same time and you'll get a completely different startup music. Check it out! And at number 2, we brought this up on our Game Boy Facts video as well. Nintendo still has customer service tech support and troubleshooting services for the GameCube on their website. We haven't tested this out, but reportedly the Nintendo Hotline phone number will actually still give you tech support as well. And I guess that works out pretty good for the one person who finally bought a GameCube yesterday and doesn't know how to Google anything. And at number 1, in 2001, Nintendo hosted a crazy thing that would probably never happen today, a contest called What Would You Do For A GameCube? Nintendo awarded five of its craziest fans an actual Nintendo GameCube before it released in November. The number one winner dressed up like a Pikmin and ate actual worms. Yes, he did this to get a free GameCube a few weeks early. Other people ate cat food, juggled Nintendo consoles, a boyfriend and girlfriend dressed up like Nintendo characters, and Mario proposed to Peach and everybody clapped. Another runner-up actually made a Nintendo GameCube 
sized replica of uncooked spam and cat food, and then they ate it. It seems like people will do anything for a free Nintendo product because that is freaking crazy. So guys, that was 10 facts about the GameCube that you might not have known. If you got any other weird quirks or facts to share with us about the Nintendo GameCube, let us know in the comments because we really want to know. And if you did have a good time with this video and maybe learned a thing or two, click the like button because that's the best way you can help us out. And if you are new, you can subscribe because we put out videos like this every single day. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.